I'm gonna shock you guys today. In this video, we're gonna do something we've never done before. We are not painting these dressers. Sometimes I find dressers with original chippy paint and you really shouldn't mess with that too much, at least in my opinion. I love chippy, but this dresser is a little bit dirty. It's a little bit dingy. It's got some weird things going on with it. We've got this line here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my orbital and I'm gonna sand the whole thing down, remove any loose paint. Zeb went through, he made sure all the drawers were correct. He did some stapling and some adding of wood and stuff. We always wanna make sure our dressers are functional. And then once we get this sanded and make sure it's clean, cause mostly it just needs a good cleaning job, then we're gonna seal it and put knobs on it. This dresser here actually has a pretty neat paint job. Whatever they used to paint it, they did a good job. There's no drips, but we all know that flat black just ain't my thing. It's got a little bit of chippy. So we're gonna distress this dresser as well, bring out some of the imperfections where the original veneer was peeling a little bit, and then these will be ready to head towards the shop. The biggest thing that we always do, even if we're not repainting dressers, because I like the original finish, is we always make sure that our dressers are clean, that they smell nice, and that all the drawers are functioning as well as they can. These dressers, I don't think they were painted like back in the day when there was lead paint, but because you never know what's on what you're gonna be sanding, make sure that you're always wearing a mask to protect you. So I've got my mask, my orbital sander, and then I like to start with 220. If 220 isn't enough and it's not smoothing it down the way that I need to, I can always go down to a 120. But to be careful, I start with a 220 and go from there because you never want to have a sander that's going to leave squiggles or divots. That's going to make it not look organic and like a natural chippy finish. Okay, so I just want to show you. Here is where I've sanded. It's nice and smooth to the touch. Here is where I've stopped. It's got a little bit of ridges from the original paint finish and it's dirty. So just sanding it is really cleaning this up a bit. When I'm all done sanding, I will actually scrub the whole thing. And it looks like it's got a little bit of bleed through happening that was underneath the dirt. So instead of sealing this with a liquid sealer, I'll give this a nice coat of wax so we don't get any additional bleed through. I've got these drips showing up in my paint here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sand over them and see if I can get them to smooth out and look a little bit better. It'll never be perfect, but we're really going for like an original age chippy look. Sometimes there's drips in the original finish. It's not greasy, it's just kind of dirty, so I'm just using bathroom cleaner. I'm gonna spray it all down inside and out. Then I'm gonna get my hose on a high pressure and wash it all off and then dry it, and then it'll be ready for wax. So even after sanding, this is what's coming up with the scrubbing bubbles. This lovely dirt. That's why I'm scrubbing this whole piece down. I don't mind selling a piece that's chippy. I don't want to sell a piece that's dirty. While I'm spraying this off, you're going to notice that some of the paint is chipping. So using the high pressure on my hose also helps to remove loose paint. When it's done, then I'll take my air hose and remove any of the rest of the loose paint. And I'll know that no paint, more paint is gonna be chipping off. This is old and real wood and not MDF. I would definitely never do this on a piece that is made of MDF, which is fiberboard, because that's gonna make that fiberboard expand and it's not gonna be very pretty. We're also gonna be sure to dry this off really quick so it doesn't warp. This piece is quite a bit imperfect and I know that not style is not for everybody, but I love an original chippy white finish. It's got a little bit of bleed through that came through and it's got a little bit of chipping going on, but we've sanded it nice and smooth. I was going to wax it, but the finish is very wipeable and cleanable as is. 
So we're gonna go ahead and put the knobs on it and it'll be ready for the shop. So this piece I'm gonna do a little bit differently. I'm gonna give a light sand over the flat surfaces and then just distress the edges. It won't be as chippy as the last piece because this original paint finish is in pretty good condition. I'm just smoothing it out and giving it a little bit softer finish. I just wanna knock the gloss off of it a little bit so it's a little bit more matte. Real quickly, I've got black all over me, that happens. This is the new finish after it's been sanded. You can see that it's much more matte, it's a little bit distressed, and this is the glossy old finish. So I'm still using 220, but for whatever reason, it has taken this paint off. I thought that I was gonna do a light distress, but I'm just gonna work with it. I think this is gonna wind up being a really cool piece. There's areas on this where my orbital just isn't getting. So when we're all done and we've got it all scrubbed down, we're gonna seal it with liquid top coat so that way we've got an even finish all over. This piece isn't gross like the other one, it's just more dusty than anything. So we've got Lysol wipes and we're gonna Lysol wipe it inside and out. I was worried if we sprayed it with the hose, all the paint would come off the way it was coming off with the uh, sander. I don't think it would have, but. I don't know. That's a lot of, uh, look, I got a handprint in black. That's just all the dust. I'm using the Central Pneumatic HVLP. It's got a 20 ounce hopper. We get ours from Harbor Freight, usually about 10 to $15. You can get them on Amazon for about 20. I've got the Sweet Pickens top coat loaded up in the hopper. I haven't diluted it. I'm running it at full strength and it should spray real nice. It's a little humid out today. So it's probably gonna take it a little longer to dry. I've got my air pressure set at 60 PSI. I've got a 60 gallon compressor that does 11.5 SCFM at 90 PSI. So the recommended pressure on this is 6 CFM at 40 PSI. And then it's also got recommendations for air compressors. It says one to six gallons, not recommended. Seven to 29 gallon compressor, it'll run intermittently. And then a 30 plus gallon air compressor, it, you can get continuous spray out of it. I used an eight gallon compressor for about a year when we got started and the compressor ran the whole time, but I never really had to stop spraying. So I feel like you can get away with that. And I sprayed hundreds of pieces with that eight gallon compressor where we were using paint and liquid top coats all day long, five days a week, just painting tons and tons of custom pieces. So you can definitely do it. I do love my 60 gallon compressor. Jamie can be doing something in the house with upholstery. I can be spraying outside at the same time and the compressor doesn't run the whole time and I never run out of pressure. I think I mentioned this in a recent video, but when you spray it or brush it on, the Sweet Pickens top coat looks like it's going on white or filmy and it will dry real nice and clear. And if it looks a little splattery, that's okay. It's pretty thick. I still spray it at full strength and it levels out real nice if you get enough on your piece. That way it has enough top coat on there to level out and be nice and even. So we get a lot of comments all the time like, how can you have to paint everything? Today we didn't paint something. We pretty much do have to paint everything. <laughs> Usually when it comes to us, they're pretty bad. Plus, it's what we like. This is original chippy white paint. And I know that like this particular finish probably isn't for everybody. But when I'm using milk paint, this is what I always want it to look like. Like random chippy all over. So when I find a piece like this, I don't always feel the need to repaint it unless it's got some stuff I can't fix. But in this case, sanding it, cleaning it, Zeb repaired the drawers and putting the hardware on. In fact, I thought some of the hardware was missing. No, we just had one hiding in the drawer. Yeah, so somebody like took a picture of this and then didn't even bother to put all the hardware on. It was like halfway hanging out, but it was all here, which is great. It's not original. I can tell from the design it's from Hobby Lobby, but it's in great shape and it looks well with the dresser, so. It probably took us almost as long to sand this, scrub it down, and then wipe it back off again just to get all the dust off and things, but it's a really fun finish and we didn't have to really do that much. We just did the sanding pretty easy stuff. 
mostly it was dirty and I also went over it with a Clorox wipe and got where any of the water kind of like went down and we had some drips of some dirty spots so really you just want to make sure your pieces are clean especially if you're reselling them Oops. all right we're gonna bring out the black dresser this one here was a lot easier we distressed it wiped it down sealed it put the knobs back on well and I was originally just gonna do like a light distress but then when I sanded it, just more came off. I really like the way it looks. The biggest thing when I'm doing dressers like this and the other one, if it starts peeling off like into like strips and it starts looking zebra stripe and not naturally worn, then I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna sand it, I'm gonna repaint it. But if I can sand it and get the distressed look that I want, there's no reason in repainting it if it's a color that I like and I can get a good finish and get it all cleaned up. We did do some drawer repair on this, and then this was really important to top coat because it was a really glossy finish. And so in the areas that my orbital couldn't get to, it was super shiny. So by re-top coating it, the person who buys it gets a great new smooth finish and a uniform look in it. The other piece is like a more chippy barn, you know, just like has been around for a long time finish. And so I feel like if I waxed or top coat that, it would have detracted from that. And it was smooth, so I didn't really need it. Oh, where to buy the top coat? If you wanna get a similar finish on your pieces where it's like got a little bit of sheen, but it's not super shiny, Sweet Pickens Top Coat is a great go-to. You can spray it or you can brush it on. And where can they buy it, Seth? You can buy it at jamierayvintage.com. <laughs> We're just giddy because the kids are at school today. First day back to school. All right. Be sure to hit that notifications button so that way you don't miss any of our DIYs. We have some fun things coming up. Hopefully we'll be able to get some projects done while the kids are at school. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.